I remember driving past this this site when I was a kid, right? Always looking in the car going, you know, mom, dad, what is that? And they're like, that's a that's a dig pit site. So there used to be a massive hole here. It's 10 acres and uh, the pit used to take up 50 to 60% of it. This is the road we're kind of standing Yeah, on we're right standing here. like literally right over here. A lot of upside, right? I could, you know, if we're going to put some streets in here, it gives naming rights. It gives a lot of cool things sure, that people would yeah. always dream about, right? Who wouldn't, wouldn't want to have a name or a street named after them mm -hmm. or their kids? We got a very unique video for you guys today with Corey McKinnon. In today's video, he breaks down for us the logistics behind buying raw land that maybe isn't right turnkey ready, but explains some of the different pivots or exit strategies he could use on this really unique property. I just love it. Corey's been sharing with us a ton of different strategies from buying a church and converting it to multifamily to buying this old lot and figuring out the best way to utilize it. Corey's just full of fantastic ideas and we're going to dive deep into the numbers in this video. What is up you guys? Matt McKeever here in Sarnia and so we're back again with Corey McKinnon and we're actually at, on like an old dig pit site. So I'm really excited. This is a really unique property, unique opportunity. Yes. This is one of those like opportunities that when I was back in college, I'd spend like nights and weekends just trolling MLS and you'd see these quirky developments and you're like, oh, if money wasn't an option, I'd love to buy something like this and either sit on it or develop. So if you don't mind, Corey, can you just kind of break down for us what this deal looks like? Sure, and uh, I mean, I remember driving past this this site when I was a kid, right? Always looking in the car going, you know, mom, dad, what is that? And they're like, that's a, that's a dig pit site. So there used to be a massive hole here. It's 10 acres and uh, the pit used to take up 50 to 60% of it, right? So, so yeah, it's, it's an old dig pit. I've been looking for some way to level up my skills and my talent with real estate. Because if I buy another duplex or triplex, it doesn't really change my life all that much. But this yeah. is a deal that can definitely change my skills and my my income as well. So, um, you know, we we purchased it for two sixty five. Um, wasn't listed to that, but we got a you know a killer deal on it. There's just no action on it. So yeah, in town, a lot of the builders kind of like to have their land ready to go. Like at the starting line, they don't want to have to do all the work to get it to the starting line, all the services and yeah, this is kind of that. an unusual situation. It is, right? So it's it's one of those things where it's almost like buying a firehouse in yeah. a great in a great neighborhood. There's a lot of work to do, but once you've remediated it and gotten it the bones back on it, then it's it's a good play, right? And we just figured, you know what, there's so many different options with it. You know, worst case I got a really big piece of land I could go set a trailer up on and my kids can have amazing adventures in here and we can set up a BMX dirt track and I don't know yeah all kinds of stuff but yeah so. that purchase price that you're getting in at like that's just so cheap even just on per a per acre, acre basis yep. yeah yeah we're 26 and a half grand an acre right so and so do you mind kind of talking through like obviously the buyer pool for a property like this is smaller than like that turnkey land very so small. How did the negotiations go on this? Was there a lot back and forth? Was it you there, just said this is my price, take it or leave it? There was a little back, a little bit of back and forth, and I mean, I always ask the agent, like I just want to get them talking, right? Try to find out, yeah. and you know, I always ask them what's a good starting point. So we started a little bit higher, and then we once. Once I had more information on it, I said, look, there's a lot of work here. Even if I just want to go dig test holes, it's like 15, 20 grand just to go test mm -hmm. the land, right? So we settled on 265. Um, and he's, you know, the owner's already got lots and lots of developments. He's in his late 50s and just wants to go and enjoy his time on his boat. And, yeah. you know, those other developments are doing very well for him. Just so time to move on. It is, and, right? And so it's, it's a lot of work. So it's, you know, he's not a young man anymore. Yeah. And maybe I'll be an old man by the time this gets done too, and I'll regret it. But to me it's worth doing so yeah and i love it we, before we actually started this video we were kind of talking through you know what's the worst case scenario right and so you yeah. kind of laid out a few of the options if you don't mind just kind of walk sure. us through them yeah i'd say these are probably like your worst case scenario worst case scenario we get we can only really do one home is like some sort of an owner occupied situation yeah. like you have the land and the city will listen to you because you own it and you want to do something for yourself personally so i'd say that's one monster home on 10 acres or the other option is just to landlock it sit on it wait you know the taxes here are about four thousand dollars a year and um, i even met a fellow on an airplane one time he actually deals with pieces of land like this that can actually be donated for taxable benefits oh. so i don't think i'll ever have a total loss like it won't yeah. ever be a total write-off or I could resell it, right? Resell it for what I paid for it or maybe slightly less or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Somebody's gonna want the land. If we would have had this to the starting line a little bit sooner, there's actually a school down the road that was looking for a, a new location. Oh. We probably could have said, hey, great place for a school, yeah. million dollars or whatever. But mm -hmm. um, I don't think it will be the worst case scenario. I think it's just gonna be you know years of work to get it to the starting line. 
the the dig pit used to be in the back half of it so the first 200 feet of the land was never dug or shouldn't have remediation issues so we could actually do eight eight lots off the main road here of you know 80 90 feet wide so that's one great option because now the uh, the sewer is uh, the capacity is up to you know what it needs to be in the gotcha. city to be able to accept more building lots yeah. around here uh, the other option is to do 13 estate size lots so getting people like three quarters of an acre and then we'd have to go with septic systems because you need a certain amount of size to do a septic system and if you're not oh, going to okay. get tied into the city sewers um, this is the highest and best use right here is yeah. like 30 i think it's 34 or 36 um 34 regular building lots you know and if a building lot is going to be selling for a hundred or hundred twenty thousand dollars once we get this ready that would be a nice payday mm -hmm. right there. It's it's going to cost a lot to, just to get this thing to the starting line because we're doing roads, we're doing curbs, we're doing sewers, hydro, yeah. all the services. I mean, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah, it's so, a big potential project, but a lot of upside as well. A lot of upside, right? I could, you know, if we're going to put some streets in here, it gives naming rights. It gives a lot of cool things sure, that people would yeah. always dream about, right? Who wouldn't, wouldn't want to have a name or a street named after them mm -hmm. or their kids or something like that? So. Yeah, that's worth something. I love it. Well, let's dive into the plans. This is the road we're kind of standing. Yeah, on we're right standing here. like literally right over here right now. So, as you can see, which which lot do you think the old owner was going to take? Yeah. Right, <laughs> the, lot thirteen. So these these would have been estate sized lots. And there's actually two two roads back over there that are stubbed off. So they they just cul de sac okay. them. And so then you're not having to because the one plan actually has a road that goes in. Gotcha. Probably have to over-engineer that road, but Which, if, yeah. if they're just little stubs here. Yeah, and like probably part of the reason for this is just this is a low-cost way to set all this up. Yeah, so I don't know if this is like two acres back here, everybody else gets kind of like three quarters of an acre. Yeah, but yeah, but, these are uh, still some really big lots. Yeah, if you look at the, um, what are they, 77 yeah. wide? 70, oh, 200 and Yeah, 240, yeah. Deep. So that's one of the plans. There's actually like three plans. Yeah. So that's one of them. Okay. So Corey, exactly how are you going to end up deciding which of these options that you'll implement here? Or what's, what's some of the decision criteria that go in? Well, I was thinking about just putting a blindfold on and just pinning a tail on it. No. Um, there's actually a great company out of Hamilton that I've been talking with and they actually do remediation for a small piece of the action, which is like, oh, okay. you know, getting these lands to the starting line is going to be one of our biggest input costs. Yes. So I don't mind giving up part of the pie for these experts that can actually do this, right? Yeah. So I think we need to do more testing and you know engage somebody who will look at this as like a as a real business model and not mm -hmm. not just a science experiment. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea I never would have considered is like literally partnering with the remediation company because they're gonna be the experts and if you can incentivize them where they have upside, if you have upside, hopefully they'll really spend some time to figure out what is the the best highest use approach at a reasonable cost. Exactly, it's gonna be one of those ones where we, we start going with it and then depending on how the samples It'll are coming back, I mean, there might be groundwater concerns that we have to work through, there might be ground stabilization issues we need to work through. Yeah. Um, worst case, we build properties without basements. I mean, there's so many different options here and mm -hmm. we're willing to work, go down that path, so. And so this is kind of a new sphere for you, right? Like this this part of real estate investing? How it do is. you get comfortable with it? Like, are you reaching out to people? Or are you just spending a lot of nights and evenings researching? What's that look like? I think you need to find the right team, right? I mean, you need to find the right people that are gonna be able to guide you properly and um, speak in layman's terms like i find when you do start to engage with some of these professionals whether they're engineers nothing against them but they talk 365 days a year like an engineer yeah i'm not an engineer so you want to make sure that they can actually like dumb it down like explain it to me like as if i'm in grade nine again like mm -hmm. don't use acronyms don't use all these other things like i need to know how these different things work right explain it to a five-year-old so yeah and usually once you kind of like set the stage like that then they're uh it goes a lot better for sure. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen with this. This is pretty much just a blank slate. So it there's is. a lot of different opportunities. I've even got people that want to buy some wood or like transport trees out of here. So it's like that could be another <laughs> option. <laughs> Lots right. of little angles. Exactly. Awesome. Well, thanks cool, again, guys. Corey, for taking thanks the for time. Really appreciate it. If you guys want to learn more about Corey, we're going to throw up all his social media links in the video description down below. So you can jump over there, reach out to Corey. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next video.
Would you guys like the chance to hang out with fantastic A players like Corey McKinnon? Well, in fact, Corey's going to be helping us with our Burr Mastermind in November 2019. But even more so, we host a mastermind every single month, either in London, Ontario, or in Toronto, Ontario. Again, if you guys want to level up, in my opinion, your network is your net worth. So you need to get around A players and start learning from them and sharing tips, strategies, and techniques. And that's what we do at these masterminds. Link in the video description down below.